Oh, yeah. All right, we're live. It's, it's, All right, it's we're live. live. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Another Monday here in the wonderful cellar with Bob. And, uh, oh, look, is it there's live? alcohol in front of us. Is it live? Do you have it up on your, on your screen? Hi, yeah, hi, folks. But sometimes it's delayed a little bit, so hopefully it'll show up. Sure. fresh. Show. Great. Well, we, we always give a couple minutes anyway while, uh, while we wait for, for people to join us. Um, I think this is the first. We actually started at four. Is, have we ever done that before? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's usually late. So we're trying. Strange. We're getting a little don't, bit. Don't bank on this for next week <laughs> or the one after. Yeah. No, don't get used to it. So um, we got something special to talk about today. Um, it is Thanksgiving week which uh, is, is really wonderful. We, uh, it's going to be a challenging year for everybody, we know, and uh, we hope everybody's able to, to uh, make plans with their, their loved ones and their family in a way that is safe and healthy. Um, we're going to be doing the best we can on our side as well. And, uh, but since it is Thanksgiving week, we thought how appropriate. We should talk about the wine that we always say is the wine you should have on Thanksgiving. You know, we actually should have brought a petite blue down. That's the other one. If you like a red, I know. I like I like starting with the crab apple into it, and the petite blue is a nice compliment as well. Yeah. So we we'll talk about that when we get there. But so we've got a few things gonna, we're going to do today. We're going to try a couple things different. So I hope you'll bear with us. We're going to try some Technical technology wizardry. here. Um, one of the first things I'd like to do is we've presented our chef. Uh, Deborah Urquhart has presented some nice bites that uh, might show up on any one of our Thanksgiving tables, and also a newly arrived sandwich that's going to be showing up in our deli in the next uh, week or so. That so uh, really good. it is delicious. It's uh, I, I think, had it's, had I think it. it's all the fixings or something. I'm all not sure if she's given a name, but she's gonna. What we're gonna do is invite Deborah here to talk about this food. Uh, and we'll, we'll do that uh, momentarily. And she can share a little bit about the food. You can learn a little bit about Deborah. She, we're so excited she's come on board with our team. She's really taken our deli into some new places and done some wonderful things with our, with our menu. And we're just great, glad to have her on our team. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to introducing her to you. Um, and then once uh, we talk a little bit about the food, we're going to get to drinking. We probably should get to drinking right away. Good. Yeah. I'm so glad you're going to say that. I was just about to force them anyway because, you know, we can get going with the conversation, the presentation, the details of what we're doing here before we're actually drinking anything. And that's, you know, usually when you're doing your introduction and Chuck and I are standing back here and we're just, our mouths are drying up. We're we're just just so Cheers, to Cheers. Thanksgiving week. Cheers, everyone. Happy holidays. Let me see if we can get Deborah in and uh, and introduce you to Deborah now. Okay. Oh, so well, hope Deborah has some. To do this is try to connect Deborah through Facebook into our Facebook Live scenario. So come into the, the winery here. She's upstairs. She's in the kitchen. In the kitchen. In She's. The deli, so we'll see what happens. We're adding her now. It says it's still adding, so we'll okay. see. I don't see anything yet on the screen here. Yeah, no, it's got a first. Doug Beltran just joined. Marika's watching us. Gary Parker is there. Hey, Gary. Good, glad you could join us. Oh, no, it actually failed. You uh -oh. tried again. Okay, we'll see. You know, this is. Um, a great situation when we get to have food along with our wine because so much of what wine is about for us and most people is the combination of uh, enjoyment with food and as we've been talking about more and more sometimes that goes really well sometimes not so well and historically we found for whatever reason this crab apple wine to go exceptionally well with roast turkey, roast chicken, especially roast turkey on Thanksgiving. We have both a, you know, a sparkling product of the crab apple, both in the bottle and in the can. It's called Dolgo in the can because the type of crab apple that we use in this wine is, a, is an ancient and heirloom variety of crab apple called a Dolgo crab apple. I don't see 
her showing up on the screen here, Bob. Yeah, no, she, the connection has failed twice, so I'm not sure what the problem is with the internet or the Wi-Fi or who maybe, knows? Maybe commercial, so, maybe, so is she going to come down? We so let's, mask uh, up? let's invite her to come down. We'll put our masks on. Okay. And uh, she can talk about the food. So Deborah, if you're watching, um, the, the, for whatever reason, the internet connection is not allowing us to include you in this video. So um, if, if, why don't you come down and you can talk about the food and we can introduce you in person. We've got our masks on, so uh, we'll remain safe. We work together every day, so right. that should right. be fine. And uh, yeah, Deborah's really brought a great transition, you know, enhancement to our deli over the past what has it been, four months now, five months? She fits in so well, I can't yeah. even remember exactly All right. how long ago. Hi. So there she is. Why don't you stand right there? Oh, and nice. out here to yeah, I could most definitely see you guys and hear you up there, but for some reason couldn't <laughs> quite make the connection with yeah, all of you. So. I tried twice, it didn't work, <laughs> but hey, we'd rather have you here in person yeah. anyway. Yeah. So. So, so Deborah, uh, uh, first of all, thanks for, for joining our team. We, yeah. We're so glad to have you. and. Uh, You've already done some really wonderful things to the deli and the menu, and and it, we all get along great. It's really been been a pleasure working with you. So yeah. thank you for that. And uh, I wanted to get a chance to introduce you to all of our fans out there. And uh, and you made some really wonderful food for this presentation. So. Um, I thought it'd be great if you could introduce it. So why don't you tell us about what you've done here? All right, so um, we've got uh, an open face turkey sandwich, kind of similar to the traditional like turkey sandwich that you would eat after, you know, with all your leftovers after Thanksgiving. Um, this one's a little bit unique. We use some, some of the ingredients that we have available in the deli already. So uh, one of the things that we have on there is um, a, a rye bread from the bread peddler is kind of the base of it and then um, we used a cranberry chutney, the cranberry orange chutney from mm. Waz Breads, and then the stuffing is made with the uh, the bread ends from the bread peddler. So the really nice part of having fresh bread is that it tastes delicious, but those little butt ends can't really um, make a nice whole sandwich to serve to people. So we'll try to utilize as much of the uh, the leftover ingredients as we can. So uh, made a stuffing with that. Um, and then we have the, the turkey from North Country Smokehouse. That's delicious on its own, but even better when you add some nice things to it. Um, and there's a tiny little bit of the uh, Harmon's cheddar cheese on there, and then um, a sweet corn coolie sauce on top to kind of moisten it up wow. a little bit. Ooh, so, that sounds good. Yeah. And when is that going to be available in the deli? Um, probably Wednesday will be the best day to kind of start serving that. So we can get everybody kind of on board. And so uh, the people that kind of uh, I know Marika helps out a lot in the kitchen, so we want to make sure that she's able to kind of know how to put that all together so that we can send it out looking just as lovely as it does right now, so. Awesome. I can't wait. Well, I can't wait to try it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you. And, and actually, you, um, you shared with me a few minutes ago some of your inspiration for this meal comes from. Yeah, so um, recently I, I spend a lot of time at Twin Barns. Um, really enjoy it there and was really excited when I was there they um, you know have a list that they're showing of all these new beers that they're gonna start canning because Twin Barns now has their own um, canning machine so now they're gonna be able to can a lot more um, small batch and kind of unique beers so they'll have a lot more fun stuff available their beer is always great um, and and you know, has great flavor, and but now they get to play around a little bit more because they can make those smaller batches. So pretty excited about that. So the the inspiration really for this sandwich came from this particular um, beer that they're canning now. It's called All the Fixings, and it's got uh, cranberry and rosemary, um, coriander, and it's made with a, a little bit of salt too. So also pairs perfectly with Thanksgiving. Um, so for those of you out there who, uh, who aren't necessarily keen on having wine with your Thanksgiving and would prefer a, a beer, we've, we've got that opportunity here available yeah. for you too. Yeah. And as does Twin Barnes, of course, yeah. who, who made it for us. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and so continuing on with the food a little bit, we've got um, right now, we're kind of running as a special. So, and that's what makes Hermit Woods Deli so special is that everything is kind of seasonal. We use uh, ingredients that are as local as possible. And as so obviously that means that the menu is kind of always changing. So there's a lot of diversity there. Um, but this particular soup, uh, the carrot ginger puree. Um, so tastes really good. And also kind of giving you another idea, something 
different maybe that you can put on your on your Thanksgiving table. You can toss some carrots just in a different way instead of the traditional, you know, roasted or boiled or, you know, get a little fun with flavors and, and try something different. So. And, and yesterday I had the opportunity to, to have a bowl of that for lunch and it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. Um, and then just kind of put together, I know this, so this isn't quite our charcuterie board that we've we have available here, but I tried to make sure that we put as many things as uh, you would typically find on your Thanksgiving table. So, um, you know, I think that very commonly people end up kind of like with a cheese and pepperoni and so kind of stick with that traditional. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, the Harmon's cheddar cheese again and then the, um, the stand in a little bit, if you would call it uh, for pepperoni is the uh, Fortuna uh, soupy that's on there. And then we've got a little bit of brie with the Thai hot pepper jelly because that, that'll pair, I think, really nicely with the crab apple wine that we're going to be talking about while we're here today. Um, and then, you know, I think just about everybody always ends up with some kind of pickle platter. So we've got a little couple different olives and some pickles there and walnuts, of course, because yeah. what is Thanksgiving without nuts? <laughs> and I'm not talking about your relatives either. <laughs> that's so. good. That's fantastic. Well, wonderful. All right. Thank you. Do you have uh, do you have plans for, for Thanksgiving with your family? I know things have changed for a lot yeah, of us. We're doing so, things differently. Yeah, we, we originally were going to kind of have a nice get together with the family, but it, we're, we're erring on the side of caution and making sure that we're doing, me and my husband both are, are chefs. And so we work with a lot of people and we want to be able to continue to prepare great food for other people. So we're, we're going to decide to stay home and keep it safe and, and, um, and try to work on keeping our community as safe as possible. So we're scaling it back a little bit, but I think me and the kids and my husband will, you know, kind of have fun playing with food. We're at, we have a couple of uh, <laughs> new experiments that we want to try with different things. So Both the kids and the parents play oh, with food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. I can't imagine growing up in a house with two chefs. For yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets a little exciting. We've had a few nicked fingers. Everybody wants to learn how to chop food or things like that. And then we have uh, my oldest daughter is a little bit more of a, a scientist than a, so she gets uh, really excited about, you know, playing with the chemistry of food more All than right. the, the preparation. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Deborah, and yeah. for putting together this yeah. fine food. I can't wait to dig in and uh, see how it, it pairs with the, with the, well, the Twin Barns go. Uh, hot, now, you said it's not a goes. What did you say it is? It's a gosse. Gosse is the traditional Yeah, it's the traditional. Yeah, the traditional That's interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Everybody yeah. always says go. So you learn something yeah. new every day. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll try it with the, with the crab apple wines that we have. So All thank right. you so much. Great. great. Thank Thanks, you. Deborah. All right. All right, well that was nice. I'm so glad you got a chance to meet Deborah. And if you really want to meet her in person, come on into the winery. Yeah, she's absolutely. here. She's here five days a week, making all this delicious food. And when she's not in the kitchen uh, preparing this food, Marika's uh, got her back, and she's uh, she's she does a fine job as well. So one of these days we'll have Marika down here, and uh, and we'll absolutely. introduce you. If you haven't met her, I'm sure you, most of you have. She's, Probably, yeah. She's yep. here most of the time. So, what do we, we should start this with the sparkling crab apples. Right. So, yes. Right. So, um, we, we have always said, and I, we said this a little bit earlier, but we have always said that, the, uh, that our crab apple wine just goes so fabulously well with turkey and all of the fixings that often are served with a turkey dinner. And, and it really does uh, fit nicely on most, most uh, holiday tables. And um, some of the reasons for that is that crab apple is got a little bit of sweetness to it mm -hmm. and it's also tart and so I don't know if you're familiar with the term intermezzo but chefs usually use an intermezzo uh, in between plates to sort of clean your palate um, it, it, a lot of rich heavy foods and gravies and things like that are going to to leave a lot of residual flavor in your in your mouth yeah and an intermezzo would serve to clear that flavor out and That's freshen kind of your like mouth with the little gherkins and olives too a, right. a pickle yes along and with your sandwich sauce. And that sort of cleans your mouth as well exactly it sort of sets the sets a clean palate so so not only does the flavor of the crab apple generally go really well with turkey it it also acts as a, as a way to clean your palate in between mm -hmm. these really delicious mm -hmm. tastes. So, so what do you think? Well, what's really interesting is the little sprig of rosemary on the top hmm. sets this rosemary aromatic. A lot of people use rosemary in their stuffings and things with it. And so I was still retaining that aromatic blending with the wine, which was really, really nice. 
Mm. You know what's also nice is that I'm picking up the spices in the rye bread. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there's some neat, um, what is it, the, the little seeds that are in a rye bread. Caraway. Caraway seeds, mm -hmm. yes. So the caraway and the rosemary are sort of working together, and mm. it's like a, a sandwich of spices. Mm. You get the caraway underneath and the rosemary on top with all this goodness of turkey and, and stuffing in the middle. And it's so wonderful that she was she made the stuffing with the ends. We, we, so we very often can't, waste. Yeah. can't use those ends, yeah. and they go, they go to waste, sadly, yeah. many times. And she's always been looking for ways to put them to good use. And, and I have to say, she's, she's found a great way. <laughs> And that sauce, what did she say mm. that sauce was? That's really interesting. There were two different ones, and she did a little drizzle or something on the top, mm. which was really nice. There's a tanginess. Well, it's the cranberry sauce from Waz, mm -hmm. which is delicious. Um, Waz, I've mentioned this many times, Waz products available um, all over New Hampshire and beyond. They're, they're produced right here in Bethlehem, and we've been using them for, I don't know, four years now. Since so. we started the deli. Yeah. Yeah. So that's wow. delicious and goes oh, really well with this. Really good. Very nice. So, the exciting thing is, we have placed our 2018 heirloom crabapple wine, sparkling heirloom crabapple wine, on very special sale for the holidays, so that. Uh, it makes it easier for so everybody, everybody to have this on your table. No excuse now. Come in and get some of this and so, enjoy. Uh, it's 25% off. If you're a club member, it's 35% off. And we're going to hold that sale all the way through the holidays, so until uh, December 24th. So if you're, if you're interested. Now, you can also purchase it online, but in order to get it online with those sale prices, at the moment, you're going to have to call the winery and ta we'll take your order oh, over the phone. Works. Okay. Because we, we only have select wines on sale, so we, we haven't, uh, Vino Shipper doesn't have the ability to have individual sales. It's either all or nothing. So uh, call us up if you want to order to be delivered, and we're happy to, we'll place that, that discount in there for you manually. Um, and then uh, also on that sale is our still crab apple. Uh, this is really the one that goes way back. We, we've been making this since 2009 or 2010. And uh, it really was, was one of our very first batch was 07. 07. 07. Wow. 07. So this is our earliest rendition of crab apple, and uh, it's, it's our 2019 crab apple. You're, uh, you're also going to get 25% off on that as well until September, uh, December 24th, and 35% uh, if you're a club member. And lastly, um, not included in the sale. We're actually almost out of it, so yeah, we it didn't really, really make well. any sense to put it on sale. We're not going to have it for that much longer, and uh, you can get the same product in the in the bottle on sale. So, but we didn't want to leave out the Dolgo can. Um, Chuck's probably getting all excited right now because I'm about <laughs> to open the Dolgo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he and Bonnie really enjoy that. I think they've purchased quite a few cases That's, of so, that product. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not done the, the bottle one, so. I'm not sure that it's going to be different. That'd be interesting. I haven't done a side by side of the, of the bottled and versus can. No, we did the two bottles, the 18 and the 19, side by side right. a few weeks ago. But um, now we get to see bottle next to can. Well, this is a little different. This is the 18, and this is the 19 Ooh. in the can. So it will be a little different. You a little know, different. You know, well, maybe not. No, it's about the same. Pretty similar. There's a slightly yeah. more reddish tinge, I think, to the 18 over the 19. Um, what's interesting, I was just trying because we were we had a tasting with our staff the other night, and there were various things like olives on the mm. platter, and that's always a hard one to pair up. And it's like the red scare or something else we had that night didn't go well at all with the olive. This is actually not bad. It's not hmm. good. It's not something you would have together. I, I'm really curious to see if the beer will go oh, with, we'll, the, with the pickly. Absolutely. Thing. We'll have to see. We'll have to try and it. just dawned on me, we just opened the Dolgo. Let's see if we can get Chuck in. Oh, great. We couldn't get great Deborah in, but maybe maybe it'll work. All right, Chuck. Oh, and Chuck says he has one ready to go. So he's uh, he's opened up a Dolgo right, to enjoy you, with Chuck. us. Um, it's, it's asking to add you. We'll see if it, if it makes it. Connection. So this is new technology, folks. Uh, Chuck is normally here, and we would love to have him here. The problem is he's just been traveling, 
he's a pilot, you know, and he has had COVID in the past and, and, and has the antibodies and everything, but we didn't want to take any risks that he could be a vector. And so we've decided to try this new technology and tie him in to the Facebook Live remotely. So he's at home right now, um, but I can tell from Bob's looks over there that it's not working. And it may be... It seems to be a connection issue of some kind, and I don't know whether it's our Wi-Fi connection here or the internet connection or... You, you were able to do it before, though. Yes, I've done it a couple times yeah. as a test, and, uh, and it worked fine. It may have something to do with... Chuck what? said he just opened up his Dolgo, so that's good. Hopefully he'll be able to connect Can we try one them? more time, Chuck? All right. I'm going to carry on with trying. I just had some of the very aged cheddar. Not surprising. Goes extremely well with the Dolgo. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an interesting one that, that we haven't really had great luck in pairing. This is the soupy for very tuna, spicy. which is very spicy. And um, I'm going to try it right now with this. I like spicy food. And sometimes, like a semi-dry Sauv Blanc or Riesling will go particularly well with a, with a green curry or something like that. So this might work. The aroma is very nice with the spice in my mm. mouth. I'm going to try it one more time. No, that's not bad at all. The heat, the heat stays on, but it doesn't... There's no clash of like bitterness in the wine or anything like that with the heat of the of the salami. So that's good. Hmm. He says, no invite on my phone. Darn the technology. Mm, I agree. <laughs> it's frustrating. Well, so so Chuck is watching. He's at home. He's opened up a can of Dolgo. He's in the comments. It's not quite the same as, as you know, him being right here. But uh He's on the comments, so if anybody wants to say anything to him, they can. And um, next time, next time. He'll, he'll, he's going to quarantine for a week away from us anyway, and and uh, hopefully by next week, we'll have the confidence that uh, he's back in our inner. And if we can't circle, we will figure out the technology. We will make it. There right. must be a way to do well, it. Well, we we have done it through Zoom in the past, where we've been in separate places. Yeah. We know we can do that. Zoom isn't ideal uh, uh, in that we can't be here sort of engaging, but we'll do what we have to do. We have to keep everybody okay, safe. We can't risk any of us getting COVID. We would have to close the winery if that was the case, and we don't want that to happen. I don't think you do either, so That's for sure. we're going to do the best we can. So one of the most unique things in a wine pairing we did with our staff this last week were walnuts. I'd never really thought about nuts with wine, hmm. but it really opened up a whole possibility of different types of nuts going with different types of wine. And I don't know, we talked a little bit about it with Deborah. She was saying, you know, it has that that dry oil. Mm. Walnuts have oh. a dry oiliness to them. And it was a really interesting, I think we were doing Petit Blue Reserve that Wednesday night. I remember trying a walnut and it went really well with it. Try it. One of my favorite things as a kid, I don't know if if you had this, but the, for the holidays, my dad would always buy a big bag of mixed nuts oh. in the shell. Oh, you can't. And your crackers are there, and you and you so you sit around and you just crack nuts any time of the day, all through the holiday season, right? You, I mean, that's you, you can't go through Thanksgiving without a okay. bowl okay. of uh, nuts. So so maybe the lots of people do this. I don't know. Um, it's been in my family's tradition yeah. for for as long as I can remember. So it's real. I love it. I it's, it's, the it's best. just great. And what's you know, funny is it only yeah. happens at Thanksgiving. So. I, know. I buy cracked nuts all the rest of the year. Yeah, but I like them in the shell. For Thanksgiving. Right. I guess it's because in the holidays we spend time together, and in in the times when you're hanging out and talking, there's a little distraction, yeah. a little easy yeah. something to do. It's like peanuts when you're cracking the yeah. peanuts together over beer. Yeah, peanuts in the shell. Of course, that's a great. So what's your favorite favorite nut in the mix? The um, hazelnuts are my favorite. Mine is the, uh, I think it's, it's the, uh, oh, no, I forget the name. The long one, the, the long odd-shaped one that's really hard to crack. It comes out like a football. 
Oh, the, um, what's that called? <laughs> Somebody knows. Somebody tell remember. us. I can't remember. It's that dark brown, right. three-sided shell. Yeah, they were really hard to, they can be really hard to crack. Yeah, and sometimes the nut gets them out. stuck inside of the shell. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta you use a little spiker and kind of <laughs> chew on it or whatever to get it out. So the rest of the year, I don't get the Almonds are real shell. nice. Uh, hazelnuts and are good too. Hazelnuts, I love hazelnuts. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, so we've tried the, the uh, we've tried a few things. Now, you're Marika says she gets some mixed nuts also. Brazil nut. Brazil nut, yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Thank, Thank you, you, Janice. Anna Sullivan came through with that one. Thank you. I want to try the cheddar. The cheddar's a no-brainer. That's such a great cheese, that really aged. I mean, what doesn't go good with cheddar? And that particular cheddar, we've had that, I think, since we opened the deli so we years have, ago. Yep, yep. And it's such a good cheddar. There was someone, a customer of ours, who's been coming in for years, came in just, well, it's maybe a month or two ago, and bought, like, Eight, six or eight pounds of that cheddar. She said, I just, really? Yeah, she came in and just cleared this out of stuff. She said, oh yeah, this, I love this stuff, but can't get enough of it. You're right. This crab apple holds up with just about anything. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not always perfect. It's not like the, the ideal taste in your mouth, but it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't take right. away from it. It's still enjoyable, right. very refreshing. Um, that green olive was nice. I didn't try, did you try it with the dark olive? Not yet. I'm going to try the, the, uh, The blue cheese. I've never been a blue cheese fan. Till I my whole life, this. I just don't care for blue cheese at all. It's, and I like earthy, funky things. I like mushrooms. I like yeah, all yeah. sorts of stuff. But blue cheese was always just wrong. It was just really weird until this one. This is the Blue Hill blue cheese. It's just incredible out of your mouth. I agree. I felt the same way. I've never been a blue cheese fan. And by the way, the, the dark olives go really good. Really? Much I better love, than I the love green. black olives. Better than the green one? Yeah. So, not quite as good as the rose or Winnie rose, but I think that blue cheese goes really well with this crab apple. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. <coughs> mm. Yeah, Marika says the Brazil nuts are her favorite also, but they're the hardest to get out of the shell in one piece. No, they sure are. Right. You get lucky every now and then. Every once in a while, there'll be one that's fully dry out. and it rattly, and then you're like, whoa, look at that. Oh, oh it's so special. <laughs> and then you can go to the store and buy a bag of Brazil nuts all cracked and shelled. Really? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> you get a whole bag of them. That's a lot of nut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like macadamia nuts. Yeah. They have that really intense richness to them, for sure. So I think we need to, to try, well, actually, we haven't done anything with the brie. Let's try the brie, and then the we brie. need to try the soup. I'm going to switch to the still. All right. Just to see if there's any real difference. The That's carbonation good. does provide a little bite to the wine, so maybe the That's, still helps, the yeah. still wine might might help with the with the brie or any of the food. I like the portion she gave today mm, too. I know. It's a big, I'm not going to have any dinner tonight. <laughs> mm, that's so good. This is another, this brie out of Vermont. Vermont's got their thing going with cheese. Mm. I got a lot of cows. <laughs> I have a lot more cows in Vermont than we do here in New Hampshire. Gerilyn just joined us and Jane Felton just joined us. Thanks, you guys. Good to see you. Hey, Jane. Mm. Oh, you can't go wrong there. It's nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's really nice. The, the brie is a much subtler cheese, even with the, the bright sauce on it. And the, Well, the sauce is a spicy sauce, but again, right. the crab apple holds up to spice. Yeah, it holds up to the spice. It kind of cools your mouth, but it, and it's got enough boldness mm -hmm. to, to, stay, to stay with the food. I really like the crab apple wine with Thai food. Yeah. You know, is it Thai food, it's hard to pair a wine with Thai food. You know, there's some nice white wines, some, some Riesling. I like some Riesling, Riesling sweetness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Riesling goes nice. But, but this crab apple, just, uh, you know, second to Thanksgiving, I think Thai food is probably the best pairing for, 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 crab, for crab apple. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. So let's try some of this soup. So this is great. This is uh, 
carrots and ginger. So one of the first, the first time you and I had Thanksgiving together, I learned about a family tradition that you had that I had never experienced, and that was the carrot and turnip. Turnip. Yes. And that. But you, is, many of you know about that. Oh my God, that's so good. So that's a very New England thing. You, is it? Okay, because I'm being I, from California. Yeah, it I think it's less uh, less likely you would have had it out there, but. Um, people who grew up in New England, I think, mostly are familiar with that. But it's basically it's half and half carrots and turnip, mashed like you'd mash potatoes with with butter. Oh, and uh, so some people good. put cream. I don't put cream, but some butter and pepper. cream and some black pepper. Oh. oh, it's so good. It is. I I love it. It's a really great. One of the things I haven't had this soup yet. This is my first taste of it. Wow. One of the things I find that Deb does really well is to nail balance. So there's this ginger note that's flying through on top, but it's not a biting, harsh, overpowering ginger. You know it's there, but the carrot is filling and providing all of that balance mm -hmm. to the ginger. There's no, there's none of the negative aspects of ginger, which can be easily overdone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's true. That's well, well described. And, and that's what I find. It was the same thing with this. With the sandwich. It was really well balanced. I saw that. Like, she, she really gets balanced. She has balanced. a good sense really of nice yeah. She understands chemistry. She, you know, she's a nurse. Her background, she's, she's educated as a nurse. And uh, about four years ago, she, she decided that the, the nursing field was not for her and wanted to, wanted to learn to become a chef. So she, she pursued that, that route. So, and I think that, the, you know, in, in the same way that your background as a geologist and a scientist science, yeah. has really helped you perfect your your skills as a winemaker. I think the same thing is applying to her. She's she's taking the yeah. science that she's learned and she's applying it to and, and she's educated me on so many things in the kitchen about how to name things, how to talk about things because of the science. She yeah. really appreciates yeah. that part. That's good. Yeah, it's really I think it is helpful when you've when you've been trained to sort of take things apart but yet keep an eye on the whole, that whole process, same thing in crafting wine. Yeah. She's, she's creating this in a short amount of time. This takes you know a year or two to, to create, and, and off it goes. Wow, she really um, nailed it with the soup. Chuck says, Google says, Brazil nuts are easier to crack when frozen or soak in water first. <laughs> Good to know. For uh, this Jen, Jen even joined us. Hey, Jen. Hi, Jen. Good to see you. Thanks again. We're um, we're doing sort of a Thanksgiving precursor here for those of you who joined us um, into this episode. Uh, our chef Deborah um, has created a, a new um, open face turkey sandwich called All the Fixings, and it was inspired by a beer from our neighbor Twin Barns Brewery. We should open this up. For we should open that up. I think <laughs> and. Um, we decided to, um, of course, with Thanksgiving coming on, talk about our crab apple wine because Bob and Chuck and I and our friends and our club members who've been enjoying this for a long time have really found that this wine pairs so well with the Thanksgiving uh, meal, most meals actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such, it's such an easy wine to drink. I mean. We had no idea. I'll, I'll back up here a little bit for those of you who may not know the story behind this. But there was literally a decorative tree growing in Bob's front yard that I took a bite of an apple when it was ripe in late August and thought, wow, this is a really apple-rich flavor, but it has incredible tannic grip. I mean, it just sucks your cheek, cheeks in. It feels like a young Zin or a Cabernet. Like yeah, a lots wine. of sugar. And yet a lot of sugar mm. in that apple. You know, they get 18 or 19, 20 bricks, which gives you about 9 or 10% alcohol from that apple on its own. Mm, so we, um, we have been making wine out of this apple uh, since that day. We thought it was maybe not going to go anywhere when we first put it together. <laughs> I mean, we just... Picked a bunch of fruit, chopped it up, <laughs> threw it in a bucket with some water and sugar and some yeast and said, all right, let's see what happens. And maybe we dump it, maybe we wouldn't. And it's turned out to be such a wonderful wine. And we didn't know this until we started the winery and we were scaling up production and we wanted to bring 
this particular wine to the public, we've researched the actual apple, and it's called a Dolgo apple, a Dolgo crab apple. And it's from the Middle East, from Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. and was brought into New England hundreds of years ago for people who were, were homesteading, were, were starting to live on the land, and they wanted to make good hard cider, because they, they want alcohol, and apples grow really well here. And hard cider also replaced water. Replaced water, it was, just it was sketchy. Alcohol. Right. Well, the water was fine when they first showed up, but then they quickly <laughs> <laughs> ruined that. <laughs> all, the, all the piss pots and the rest of it, and they just go on outside and dump, dump it in the trough, and pretty soon their, their streams and their creeks are all contaminated, but they knew when they fermented their apple juice that that, that was yeah. safe, yeah. safe to drink. But um, it's, been a, it's been a great journey um, with the Dolgo crab apple. Um, Do you know, I, I just add on to that story, and I, and I learned this as, as a part of this research, but most people don't know this, but almost all apples come from Kazakhstan. <laughs> It's, just, it's kind of mind blowing that all apples in the world Not at Granny one Smith. point came from God. You know, Granny Smith, absolutely all of them. And actually, no, that's that. Uh, the science has actually uh, developed some theories that there are some other areas around the globe where some apples may have come from, other than Kazakhstan. Okay. And the the reason for this is during one of the most uh, intense ice ages, all the apple trees in the world were wiped out by the Ice Age, really? except for a couple small pockets where they were able to survive. The climate remained Correct. stable enough. And Kazakhstan was one and of And Kazakhstan was an area that apple trees were able to survive. Wow. And they're, they're learning that there were maybe another uh, couple areas genetically that figured this, they figured this out. So, uh, so it's possible that there's others. But the majority of apples, uh, because of this ice modern age, day modern day apples have migrated from Kazakhstan. <laughs> Humans have, have grabbed clippings yeah. from those trees and brought them around the world and replanted them. So uh, it's fascinating. I wonder, story. remember um, Guns, Germs, and Steel? Remember yes. that book? Yes. Uh, yes. Diamond, Damon, the, the Gerard the Diamond. Yeah, about how moving things sort of east to west and the same latitudes would spread because plants and animals were somewhat similar. Yeah. So that we were moving things that way. So bringing those to England, to to New England, and, and around Asia and the rest of it, was more likely than moving apples to Peru, or something like that. Right. And so right. Peru and those well, they wouldn't would have to probably own. survive right. in Peru. So. Yeah. So. This is good. Let's open a beer. All right. Let's open a beer. It's time. So, I think this is the first time. We've had a beer. Well, did we have a beer while we're sitting on the dock there in, in uh, Stonington? <laughs> we may have. So <laughs> I me, can't remember. <laughs> we might have. Yeah, we might have. We might have a cider. Who knows? But I'll tell you what. If you haven't been to Twin Barns, Twin Barns last year opened up a, a brewery in New Hampshire. I mean, in Meredith. It was the first Stone's throw from here. First, first brewery in Meredith, and and uh, the the two guys who opened it up, Dave and and uh, and Bruce. Great guys, really motivated to create a really great product and, and, uh, and a great service. And we, I, I've been really enjoyed working with them. Um, we've gotten to know them early on in their progress and, and uh, done whatever we can to help support them. And because we, we think it's great, we need a brewery in town here. Oh, yeah. And uh, they've done very well. And then Randy coming on as a brewer from Hobbs. That's right. Hobbs, you know, and Hobbs is, is partly owned by Ash, who's, who's uh, we've Sap known House since Meadery. the very beginning, right. since Sap House Meadery. It's Great a small world, so yeah. we, we really want to stay friends and, and support each other and help each other uh, grow our businesses. And, and to that end, Twin Barns has been a, a great supporter of us as well. They carry our, uh, our Hermit Hard Apple Cranberry Cider, which uh, probably would also really go good on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, it would. <laughs> Um, so they carry our cider. We carry their beer here. You can get at, right now. You can get four varieties of Twin Barns beers in our yeah. So in our deli. Deborah's told me they they bought their own canning line. Yes, and it, set it up somehow down in that brewery. I don't know how Randy fit it all in there, but but that's great. It opens up, like she said, all this opportunity for them to do the small can runs. And I'm thinking I got need to go bring over some. Sire hard cider and spend a little time with Randy and Dave and talk to him about maybe some 
some one-off small batch canning things that we could do over there. I, I, I think you should do that, but I don't think the TTB will be too happy about that yeah, maybe not, prospect. Um, there, I know there, I know there have been some pretty strict laws and rules about cross-contaminating licenses. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's fun. Last time I was over there uh, hanging out with Randy, he was talking to me about incorporating some fruit into some of the beers. And so we were talking shop. My, my stuff with wine and his stuff with beers. And he has gone ahead and created this fruit beer. So tell me. I wasn't involved with this at all. No, I, no, yeah. I know. And, he, but he, tell he, me, he, you, 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 you know more about beer than I do. Uh, I used to call this a goes. We just learned it's a gose. And There's three or four different pronunciations of it. Okay. I wasn't going to chime in on that. And well, let it, let let it us go. know. But, well, but, it, but I, I don't think it's decided. It's, it's okay. like a session. No one really knows the roots and the definition of a session. So goes, goes, a, goes, e, there's a bunch okay. of different pronunciations of it. Okay, but, so what is it? What, what is a, a goze or a It goes? typically will have a little salt okay. in it. Um, it's often a lighter, sort of brighter um, beer. And very often it forms the basis for experimenting with other materials. You're incorporating fruit. You're incorporating spices. You're doing different things hmm. with, the, with the beer. It's and an ale. It's a four point nine percent. So it's pretty it's mid, pretty mid, mid range. Yep. I don't think anybody's done like double gozes or, or triples. I think they stick I'm to sure that they name. They, you know, it'd be like <laughs> someone's going to come out with a double session. Well, what the hell is that? You know, confusing. <laughs> confusing. Yes. Wow. So fascinating, it's really nice spice. I get the, I get the uh, spice. That's it. The the coriander, yep. the um, the uh, can't think of the name of that spice. Rosemary. Right rosemary. Thank you. Yeah. Rosemary is definitely pre prevalent all the way through afterwards, but there's this great tangy sour character. Rosemary, to it. coriander, salt, cranberries. Sea salt from the Isles of Shoals. Oh, great. Nice. Very so local. Incorporated a local format to that. Perfect right. beer. So I'm going to have an all the fixing sandwich from Hermit Woods Winery with all the fixings of beer from Twins Bar. Awesome. Me too. <laughs> Here we go. So thank you guys at Twin Barns for inspiring. For yes. creating this beer, cheers, and for inspiring David to create this food. Well, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. The rosemary and the you just go. <laughs> just marry yeah. in your yeah. mouth. Yeah, you could just eat and drink this all day long. All day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be a wreck at night, but or the next morning anyway. Hmm, <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. That's a hit. So, you, know, you know, there's something... It's interesting having a beer relative to a wine. It's lighter. It's more water. It's, you know, it's, it's more... Uh, it washes stuff down. You drink more of it. But... Wine has a sort of bigger, heavier feel, richer. So they both play a role. They mm -hmm. both work well, but it's you have to pair it just right. You know the um, the Sauvignon Blanc with a bunch of mussels or or something like that is different than any sort of beer, even a lager to mm -hmm. go along with that. Mm -hmm. Won't hold up. It doesn't have quite the body and presence that that Sauvignon Blanc with that Riesling has. And other times when you're eating a salty, oily pizza or something like that, and you've got a nice lager to wash that down with, it's just a great IPA combination. No, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but this sandwich, I think, goes well with both. It really does. They're a different experience. The wine is... It's heavier and richer. It's 
sort of is part of the meal. There's a there's a weight to it. Yeah. There's a thickness to yeah. it, and um, it's not as as sort of fresh and cleansing that the beer is. Well, the sparkling version might be. You get that light effervescence off the sparkling mm. crab apple. You're going to get similar. It's still not as light as the beer, of course. Right. Not, there's a lot more alcohol in the sparkling version. But <clears throat> one of the things that's most interesting is, and I, you know, I run into a lot of people in in the world who, who really talk about how they how they identified their favorite beer or their favorite wine or their favorite spirit, and they and they, and they just go back to that same spirit, wine or beer all the time, and it's such a shame. There's so many wonderful, wonderful mm. products in all categories being made every day, and I, I, I can't imagine drinking the same thing every night. I mean, I, I don't, you know, every time I drink a beer, I want to find a new brewery with a new flavor. And yeah, sure, I have some go-tos that I like to, like to enjoy when, when uh, you know, looking for something in particular. But, but I also want difference. I want change. I want something fresh. And so I think this is, I agree with you 100%. And I think most people out there, especially watching a show like this, are of the same mind. And the industry is responding to that. Well, actually, and we're creating new things. But, but let's just go back to our father or our father's father and the beer that they had. They were probably not thinking about, oh, I want something different. They had their beer or their wine or whatever their drink of preference was. And they were fine having that every day. Right. It was and, the and same it's true, thing. not and, just and it was beer. really it's wine, enjoyable beer, the spirit. to have that. Oh, every time it's dependable. Yeah. It's consistent. We my, live my, every my time. dad drank this this Valentine beer you know, all the time, cheap stuff, <laughs> and um, that was something that he enjoyed. That was, you know, at the end of the day, he'd come home, and dinner's about ready, and that, that was it. Well, I, you know, that's a good point. There's a place for both, and I and I agree. Actually, there's a there is a there are certain wines and beers and, and spirits certainly that are go-tos for me that yeah. you know when I just when I don't want to think much about it and I know what, what I'm going to enjoy and I and a I know sapphire I can... martini <laughs> <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> or a Laphroaig scotch right <laughs> so yeah there, there's there are there are there needs to be some go-tos there's that's certainly okay but we're in a different world right now people are people are experimenting Craft is on fire. There's 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 new breweries, wineries, and distilleries opening up around the world. New ciders, and everybody's got to flip it now. I mean, it used to be just ten years ago in the craft brewing scene that you would have your staples, four or five beers that everybody knew that drank mostly: pale ales, a lager, an IPA, a, Not a stout, and then you would have the seasonal that would come through, your pumpkin ale, your martin, whatever it was. But now, everybody wants something new every time they come in. Right. They're, you know, it's just got to be the, that new IPA. That's so some place will have six different IPAs on the menu. Six different IPAs that are changing love all the places. time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's wild. It's, it's, we've created this new interest and comparison, and we're really... Um, hungry for the for the new. Well, what's next? Make something different. Yeah. Twist it. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes that can go too far too. Oh yeah. yeah. Some are just one-offs that are just like people are trying all kinds of experiments yeah. that yeah. maybe shouldn't always be tried. But but that's okay. It's uh, you know to each their own. Everybody has to sort of find their own path. And I think uh, it's really fun for the for the brewing. It's a real challenge. But I'm sure Randy is working through different. Ideas. He's he's working different recipes. He he must have gone through a number of different trials to come up with this blend. Right. Puts it out, tweaks it. The seasons are changing. He's got a new project. He wants to do some maple Baltic porter, you know, and, and so he's playing with those experiments. So by the time March comes along and there's maple going on and porter in the cold weather would be perfect. He'll I'm sure he'll have something that's really cool that way. And a lot of breweries do that, which yeah. is really fun. Speaking of breweries, you know what Hobbs is up to. Yeah. Hobbs just, I don't know if you're familiar, Hobbs Brewery, our friend uh, Ash over at Tough House uh, started Hobbs, the brewery and restaurant, and uh, they just opened up a, a 20 barrel, I think? I think it's 20 barrel. 20 yeah. barrel, so a dedicated brewery to brew some of their more popular beers 
and some new beers. They're going to, I think they're going to do some new stuff there as well. They're still brewing beer at Hobbs, the restaurant, but they're they're uh, now now in a twenty barrel system. It's across the street, right? Uh, it's Just a couple a miles down the road. Oh, okay. It's a couple miles south. It's on on uh, I believe it's on Route sixteen, a couple two, three, four, five miles south of of where the Hobbs restaurant is. They just opened last weekend, I think. It's, yeah. They're brand new. They do have a tasting room. You can go in and, and try some of their beers. And uh, they're going to be. Sounds like we need a field trip as soon as this oh. pandemic is done. <laughs> Absolutely. There are a lot of field trips planned. They're backed oh, up. They're getting backed up. You know, the, the Gerilyn six... chimed in on the Valentine beer. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> no, she just said she just commented on Valentine beer. Yeah, that was a. I don't know. Maybe it's a California thing. Maybe do you have that here on the East Coast? I don't even know. I I don't know. I know Valentine beer, so we I've seen it. I don't know where I've seen it, but I mean, I didn't know we, when I until I was back east. I didn't know about Carling Black Label. And sure, or Narragansett. Narragansett. You know, our New England beer is Narragansett. Narragansett. Right down in Rhode Island. That's where yeah. I'm from. We uh, we used to love love that when I was when I was young and. What was and, the uh, there's like a, Colt know, 104? Or <laughs> I don't even know where that's out. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's a couple out of Rochester, New York, that were that were pretty classic New yep. England and beers. Where is Valentine made? I don't, I don't even know. know. Anybody know? If you know where Valentine beer is made, let us know. We'd yeah. be interested to know. So uh, it is interesting, and it, you know, it's always been part of our love affair of beverages has been around beer. Sure. Absolutely. For those of you who, we don't, who don't know, Bob and I got connected through through beer. That's how we first started interacting, and um, we've been very interested and as much enamored with the variety and changes going on in beer as we are in the in the wine world. Well, they, so. they're all connected. You know, it is connected. There's, I just Sap House was just talking about their their excitement. They just got some barrels from a distiller up in Oh, New I York. saw that. Yeah, and they're going to start making mead out of these distillers barrels, and then they're going to take those mead barrels and send them back to the distiller, and they're going to make some some spirits out of the mead barrels. And there's some great exchanges of beer barrels and wine, and wine and beer, and it's just. The world is, is our oyster right now. We yeah. have so many yeah. choices we yeah. can we can explore. It's wonderful, and and I love the collaboration that, that we get to have with with the other the other people in the industry, winemakers, brewers, distillers. It's fun. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. It's exciting yeah. times. Yeah. We, have, we haven't had times like this in in a long time. Yeah, it's it was very creative right now. A couple of years ago. I think two years ago was the first time there ended up uh, that there are more breweries in the U.S. than there were when Prohibition started. That's right. I remember you 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 brought that little tidbit of data in here one day. It yeah. was years ago, and you said, "You know what, Ken? For the first time since before Prohibition, we finally have the same number of breweries as we did." Before prohibition, which is in the thousands, it's yeah, something it's like four thousand. or five thousand breweries yeah, in the U.S. And what that is is when you know before prohibition, breweries were on every corner. Breweries were in every town. One in every town. Right. You didn't have the ability to distribute products around the world yeah. like you yeah. like you do today. And so so breweries were were local, and that was terrific. And now we're there again. You can get a beer in Meredith, made in yeah. Meredith, and yeah. you can go to Bristol and have one at Shackett. So yeah. you can go to Ashland and have one <laughs> at White Mountain Brewery. There's, it's a, great. there's a brewery in every town. We're yeah. there. We've that's, arrived. That's, 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 that's it. the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, there's an economy of scale, and that's what enabled Budweiser and, and others to really ramp it up and expand it. Yeah. yeah. Bring the price way down. Yep. Yeah and distribute it. But now people have a much more discerning palate. They're looking for unique and craft. And looking and to support local. And that's not done by Budweiser. That's that's fine. They got their thing going on and lots of people enjoy it. But if you're into that unique and special, it's something else. Unique and special and local. And made local. here. Made by your neighbors. Made by your friends. The people that you know work at the work at the brewery or work at the winery. And, uh, and you get it right down the street from where you live. There's, yeah. there's nothing better than that. So, so I, I think we've we've covered a, a lot of territory today. How um, are we on time wise? I we're think not... it's time. We're we're uh, we're right up. Right. We, can you Good. believe this? We actually started at four, and, and we're going to end at five. We we commit an hour to this, and it's it's. Do not ever anticipate that <laughs> as being the norm. It's not going to happen. Just, this is a rarity. <laughs> Something's clicking right here somehow, but uh, it's that, that's a rarity. So, well, it's, good. It's, it's been great. I've had a lot of fun. I, I've, again, once again, every time we do this, and you know, I actually wanted to mention, we do have a couple of minutes before we, we yeah. break the time here. 
Uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we did the, the charcuterie board with, with several different wines. And after that, I got to thinking, I was like, you know, th this is an experience that, that is just so invaluable to our development and our pleasure and enjoyment and the reason that we're in this business. And so we decided after that last show that we needed to include everybody at Hermit Woods on this, on this journey. So, uh, so, so last week, uh, was it last week? It was, it was last Wednesday. Week. Yeah, it was last Wednesday. We invited everybody who works at Hermit Woods to uh, separate, and we did this in a very social distance manner. We all spread out around the winery, and we, uh, we cracked open a number of wines and, and made mini charcuterie plates for everybody, and uh, we did a wine and cheese pairing as a team, as a group. That, so was, that, we that could, was a lot of fun. It was a I lot of fun. I look forward to the next one. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's, you know, people brought out different things. I love Marika's comment about the, the uh, sun-dried tomatoes yeah. for the aroma of the Winnie White. And, and well, because you just, learn together. You, well, you that was really great experience. because these guys are the front lines. They're explaining this, they're meeting the customers and trying to explain our unique wines to right. people coming off the street and they don't know who we are. So it's really important. It's helpful to them, helpful to us. We, we start to shape it together. Which was great. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with everybody. We 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 really, you know, this is this is what makes this journey so important for us and so valuable is the the enjoyment that we've had, the camaraderie and the and the and the you know sharing food and, and wine together. It's and the that's, drinking. That's in the drinking. That's, <laughs> that's what this is all about and has been since the beginning. So if, if this doesn't carry forth through everything we do, then then why are we even doing it? So. So uh, anyway, I uh, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And uh, this will continue to live on on our Facebook page. We're also getting better. We're going to post all of these to our website on YouTube. And uh, so you can, you can watch these in different ways if you, if you don't have Facebook. And, um, and so I, I wanted to reinforce again, uh, we are doing our holiday sale. There's actually five wines on the holiday sale. It's our sparkling crab apple from 2018, our, our uh, crab apple still uh, from 2019. We have our passion popper, one of our dessert wines is on sale, Hermitage and elderberry wine. So uh, any of those wines are now 25% off or as a club member, you get 35% off. Um, if you do want us to ship you those wines, you have to order them directly from us. You can't to get that discount. To get the discount. Yeah. You can't order them Good. directly on VinoShip or on our website. So just call us at the winery. So um, we hope everybody uh, has great plans uh, to, the, to, to, uh, to the best of your ability to share your Thanksgiving holiday with safe, your family safe plans. and everybody friends safe. In, a safe, in a safe way. Yeah. And uh, we'll get through this. Uh, there's, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. I think uh, by, by, by mid-year next year. We're there's a be light at the side. end of the third floor, too. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's a great progress. Great we progress. The electricians came in like five days or Knocked something. Knocked it out. And just, yeah. they had a bunch of people in there. And wires were all over the place. I have no idea how they organize all that <laughs> stuff. But now the insulation crew is in here, and they're packing that all up. And soon the sheetrock will come in. I mean, it's getting it's closer. Getting and if you're in the winery in the next few weeks or whatever, you know, and you see Ken or I or even one of our team members, ask yeah, to take to ask for a tour. That we'll take you up and show you what what's going on. I know many of you have done that already. So, thanks for joining us today. We're going to sign off, and uh, it's it's four fifty eight. We're going to this will be the, this is a one one time. It's a one off. We're never going to do this again. But I anyway, don't think we're going to make it. Started at four. Because there's, there's a little bit of conversation that always drags no, on. No, no, There's a good. new thing that comes up that you just <laughs> one more it. mention. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, you're trying. <laughs> so tune That's in good. next week. We have two, two shows I'm excited about sharing uh, next week or the week after. We haven't decided. Possibly the week after. Uh, Melanie, our assistant winemaker, has got some wines from her winery in North Carolina that we're going to share. That she really, helped make. She helped yeah. make. Uh, integral part of it and so really excited to introduce you to Melanie and share some of the wines from where she got her expertise and skills and uh, and we talked about another what was the other thing we said we we're gonna do this oh can't wait we're gonna try some Red Scare with a whole lineup of of, uh, of, Pinos. of Pinos from all over the world uh, that's you know because we've done this in the past yes, with our really friends with our, uh, with our wine tasting group that Pinot Noir is one of those chameleon grapes like Chardonnay it, it it grows and really expresses terroir in the, in the smaller craft scale. So Pinot to Pinot to Pinot can be vastly different yep. depending on where you get them from. So it'd be really interesting to see 
from different regions if there is a Pinot Noir area that's a little bit more aligned with Red Scare. Is Red Scare right. a little bit more like a, a um, Niagara on the Lake Pinot Noir? Yep. Or is it a little bit more like a, you know, uh, uh, Washington State Pinot Noir? We're going to find out. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Plus All we right. get to drink a bunch of Pinot Noir. We're going to try and get better at posting this stuff beforehand so you know what we're going to be doing next Monday. So we're doing better at it. So uh, uh, tune in next Monday, 4 o'clock, for In the Cellar with Ken Hartcastle, winemaker at Hermit Woods Winery. So we'll see you then. Have a great Thanksgiving holidays, everyone. Enjoy. We'll see you soon.